Nemo ETFs have partnered with investors for over a decade. Sound the alarm. For decades, we've been told that we'll overrun the planet and there are simply just too many of us. We've been warned about how population growth affects climate change, housing sustainability, livable wages, and much more. However, just like an elastic band, the more you stretch one way, the farther it'll snap back the other. Something that not many of us have thought about is the idea that population collapse could be a more significant concern. Chris, I've got a hot take question for you, buddy. Last August, Elon Musk tweeted this. Population collapse due to low birth rates is a much bigger risk to civilization than global warming. Do you agree or do you think this is just an over-exaggeration? No, I agree. I think it's simple mathematics when you really look at the death rates that we can expect in the coming years and the birth rates and where they're at right now. So we can see, obviously, a bunch of people leaving the workplace and, and passing away, and then no one really coming up to fuel it. So it's obviously going to be a laggard. We're not going to see it in real time happen, but it's, it's something that we have to look 20, 30 years kind of down the road to really see the repercussions of our, our actions today and even y yesterday. Carolina, would you agree with Elon Musk's tweet, climate change versus population collapse? Is it really that big of an issue? I mean, honestly, depending on the numbers, I don't really know off the top of my head, but I would just say that those are kind of two different things to talk about. Why compare them? Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Canada is at a 1.4 birth rate, but what does that really mean? I sat down with Aaron Woodrick, director of the domestic policy program at the McDonald Laurier Institute and Ottawa Think Tank, to discuss this issue. Let's hear from him. What is population collapse and why are we suddenly talking about it? Population collapse is really when a country's uh, people stop having children um, and the population starts to get weighted towards old people and away from younger people. That means there's fewer people to pay the bills. You know, you pay taxes, you pay into the system, and then you receive benefits to support you in your old age. And that system only works, think of it as a pyramid, if the, the people at the top is smaller than the people at the bottom. So the WEF reports that in the 60s, there were six people of working age for every retired person person. Yeah. Today, the ratio is just three to one. And by 2035, like you mentioned, it will be two to one. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. impact will this specifically have on my generation? And should my generation actually be concerned? Your generation should be very concerned. I mean, the first most obvious impact will be on your tax rates. If people before could pay taxes at 20 or 30 percent, well, now there's fewer of you. They're going to start upping your taxes. You're going to start paying 40, 50. It's not unthinkable to think a majority of every dollar you earn is going to have to go to the government. I'm curious why we are talking about it now. Why not 10 years ago? Why not 20 years ago? I think part of the problem is politics. A lot of it is about what's tomorrow and next year. And long-term planning is very rare. I do think also for a long time, this idea of overpopulation was um, a, a very uh, very prominent concern. And frankly, I think people got that completely backwards. The mistake with that thinking was to not realize about technological improvement. Yeah. But now we have the opposite problem. Now, in a lot of countries, people are not having uh, children. There's a whole bunch of reasons for that that we can try and unpack. Um, and But I, I think that is the real bigger concern now. And that is something that policymakers are really gonna have to pay attention to in the years to come. Fantastic conversation with Aaron and really provided a lot of insight on this issue. Now, I'm curious, Bianca, I'm going to throw it to you. Do you agree or disagree with Aaron's points here? I mean, is population collapse really that big of an issue? I think it's a big issue, but I don't know if it's such a big issue for what he's saying, right? So, um... I am very pro babies. We should be, we should have, we should be making more babies. <laughs> um, but when it comes to the future, maybe our generation might suffer in terms of that three to one uh, number that he was throwing out. But we also didn't take into consideration how few, how many fewer jobs human beings will have to be doing uh, in the future compared to now, right? So we might need more people to work. That's true. But in regards to AI and all these different jobs that are being taken over by these different technological advances that we have. Um, I, I don't know if using taxes would scare me into uh, having babies versus uh, the other economical Interesting. issues. Interesting. Like technology plays, and I've heard this argument a few times doing research on this topic, that technology plays a serious role mm -hmm. in the idea of population collapse not necessarily being a big thing. Now, I got to be curious here. Like, Chris, have you actually seen population collapse or the idea of it affect you in your day-to-day -day life? 
Not at this point, but I think as he, uh, Aaron was saying, it's kind of like a laggard. We're not necessarily in it right now, especially not in Canada with immigration, some of the things we have uh, compensating for our declining population. So I think day to day, Press, I haven't experienced that. Hold that thought. We'll be right back.